Hi and welcome to Leitrim Daily. My name is Brefton Early and you're listening to the Sports Preview Show here on the podcast. It's episode 229 and it's kindly supported by the local enterprise office, Leitrim. Thank you for your continued support of the show and the platform. Uh, we have a pretty wide range of sports today. It's all quiet on the Gaelic football front and men's level, apart from junior. We'll get into that later on. But all roads lead to Carrick and Shannon this Sunday afternoon uh, for at least 100 lucky supporters of each club. Glencar Manor and Ballinamore, Shauna Heslins do battle in their first ever meeting in a county final. It's Ballinamore's first ever county final. And Manor Hamilton will be hoping also to add their name to the list of title winners uh, in their third consecutive attempt two defeats in the last two years they'll be looking to go one better but of course Balnamore will be hoping it will be their day on Sunday afternoon there's also games at junior and intermediate level we'll talk about those when we run through the fixtures very very shortly we do have some interviews on the show today and they are a little bit more in depth than we have done in previous years we're going to be talking to Michelle Hackett about her golfing uh, career and how she's managed to to win herself a couple of nice titles in the region including the Irish Golfer Magazine uh, tour event held in the Sleeve Russell recently we'll also be chatting about a little bit of Gaelic football she's a member of that Mohol squad preparing for an intermediate final this weekend too We'll also hear all about National Bike Week from the local sports partnership here in Leitrim. Patricia Ford will be joining us shortly to have a chat with us about all that that encompasses and what is involved in National Bike Week. There's events all over the county. All you need is a bike and some of them they will actually provide the bike for you from kids as young as two and a half to adults up to whatever age you're happy enough to be on a bike still at. So there's plenty of things happening from Kinlaw right down to Carrick and Shannon across the Ballinamore for all ages, groups, community groups and everything. Uh, there's something for everybody involved in that. We'll give you full details on that in our conversation with Patricia later in the programme. There are some Gaelic football games at junior level. We'll talk about that too, as well as local soccer, National League representation, and the, the return of rugby to the local sporting field. Let's start with ladies football. It is the pinnacle of the club season here in County Leitrim, with the finals at senior, intermediate and junior level all taking place over the next two days. Now, I suppose in normal circumstances, these games would be played as a, a double or a triple header in Park Sean with a, a big crowd at the games. That's not going to be the case this year. Unfortunately, COVID restrictions have meant the games can't be played in the same location. They will be played across the weekend. The senior final, as we mentioned, will be in Park Sean at 230 on Sunday afternoon, uh, vitally important uh, for people to get their tickets from their clubs. Please don't arrive at the ground unannounced. You must have a ticket to gain entry. Uh, if you're not lucky enough to get a ticket for the game at the weekend, you can watch that on the Leitrim GAA website, and that is available at live.leitrimgaa.ie. And I think the ticket for that, the pass to watch the county final, is €10 Euros for this weekend and Claire Owens will be joining John Lynch on commentary and I'll also be involved in the commentary on that on Sunday. So uh, the very best of luck to both teams taking part in that. There is also, as we mentioned, finals at intermediate and junior level and they take place on Saturday afternoon, 3pm in Balnamore. Drummer Hare and Mohull do battle. Uh, we'll be chatting about it briefly with Michelle Hackett later in the programme. She's a member of that Mohull squad uh, for the last three or four seasons. So they're looking forward to that particular game. And also uh, the Junior Championship final is Sunday evening at 5pm in Leitrim Village. And Drum Kieran and Fianna St. Collins, the two first teams at that grade, will be uh, doing battle to see who will lift that title and earn their place in the Intermediate Championship in 2021 so uh, absolutely massive game for everybody involved in all of those clubs six teams uh, i wish them all the best of luck over the course of the next 48 hours and uh, obviously they can't all be winners but uh, just getting to the final is a huge achievement in in a really really strange season for the sport Now, there are a full series of games at junior, A, B and C level, as well as some semi-finals at underage across the county. Starting this evening in the Gaelic Games and the Under-15 Championship Division 1 semi-finals between St Mary's, Kiltard and Mohull. The first of three meetings, big, big meetings between those sides over the next nine or ten days. That takes place in Carrick and Shannon at 6pm on Friday evening, while McDermott the Gales play at Leitrim Gales in Ballinamore at 6pm. That's an amalgamation of Kiltubrid and Balnamore for those that might not be familiar with that. Tomorrow afternoon around 5pm uh, at 
all throw-ins at 5pm. Vista Med Junior A Football Championship. Anaduff versus Clune. Glen Car Manor versus St. Mary's Clotard. Sean O'Heslin's Ballinamore versus Glen Farn Kilty Clotard. And Ahavas versus Carrigallon. So a nice local derby over there between Ahavas and Carrigallon to round off those quarterfinals in the Junior A Football Championship. Of course, just uh, second teams all with the exception of Clune. Glenfarn, Kilty and Ahavas, who would be expected to come through those, although Shauna Heslins have been pretty impressive at this level and they will pose a serious problem for Glenfarn, Kilty in their hopes of securing a junior championship title. Yeah, Glencar Manor and St Mary's, both first teams there and both have been fairly impressive at this level so far. So I would expect the semi-finals to be fairly strong at that level uh, when everything is said and done after the weekend. Uh, on Sunday morning... Uh, 11.30 throw-ins in the Junior B Football Championship and that is Sean Heston's Balnamore versus Kiltubbard and that's a relegation semi-final so we'll be required to see which team gets relegated from the Junior B Football Championship this year and St Mary's Kiltard will play Glencar Manor Hamilton again in Junior B Football Championship that's at 12pm in Park Nave Moura in Carrick and Shannon, uh, the club grounds here beside us here in the Hive. And that's a semi final playoff to decide who will qualify for that Junior B Football Championship semi final. In the Junior C Football Championship, two games at that level also on so- Sunday afternoon, 1 30 in Anna Duffy's Borna Kula and Leitrim Gales do battle, while in Allen Gales and Drumshambo, Ahavas and Drumahair will lock horns at 1 30 pm also. Both those games straight semi finals. Uh, winners progressing to the county final as you would expect and the final game of the weekend at adult level is in the junior a football championship and it's a relegation final between ahawillan and gort letra at 1:30 in clune a disappointing start to the season so far for a lot of those sides and they'll be looking to maybe save their season by surviving at the junior a level gort letra and ahawillan have both been uh, recipients of some pretty tough beatings at those levels I know Ahwillan didn't field in one game so uh, interesting to see who gets to survive in Junior A and maybe who gets the reprieve of dropping down to the next level In local soccer, there's a full round of fixtures in the second weekend of the Sligo Leitrim District Soccer League. And we'll start with the Super League fixtures. One fixture on Saturday evening between Strand Celtic and Arrow Harps. That kick off at 7.30 in Strand Celtic. Uh, Sunday morning, 11am, a full round of fixtures in that division. MCR versus Ballymoat Celtic. Merville United versus Cartron United. Real Tober versus Cliffany Celtic. And the one that's of interest to a Leitrim audience, Ahana Celtic versus Manor Rangers. Draw last week for Manor Rangers. They'll be looking to get their season up and running. Uh, with Manor being out of the Senior Football Championship, it does give them that opportunity. But there is a direct clash there between uh, the Gaelic games uh, at Junior A and Junior B level this weekend. So it might be another week before, or, or two, before um, we see that Manor team at full strength in that Super League of course, two teams in action in the Premier League from a Leitrim point of view, and they're Carrick Town, who host Colry Bowes, that game 11am kickoff also Sunday morning, while Drummer make the very short journey to Ballygawley Celtic for their first away fixture at this level since their creation a week ago in this division. St John's FC versus Gertie and Celtic, and Kulani United versus Kilglass and Escrone United and Shaftpool United will play Glenview Stars. That is the full round of fixtures. There's one other fixture on Sunday afternoon, Ballastair United versus Carberry FC. That's at 2pm in the Super League on Sunday afternoon. One game of note in the SSE Electricity League Premier Division this evening, uh, although from a Leitrim point of view, it uh, won't really affect anything. Niall Moran suspended for tonight's fixture against Bohemians. He received a red card last week, so he will miss tonight's game. It's the only change in the Sligo Rover squad as they look to get back to winning ways after a bit of a lull last weekend in Dublin against St. Pat's. Of course, no action in the Women's National League this weekend because of the international break. Ireland playing Germany this weekend. No Leitrim representation in that. Uh, but Dervla Byrne will be active. She will be playing for Mohol in the final of the Intermediate Football Championship. Provided she's picked, of course. I uh, don't want to preempt anyone's decisions. But uh, will be available for Mohol because there's no soccer commitments this weekend for Dervla. So Drumahair might not be so happy to hear that. But that is the current situation. In terms of rugby, it's the return of action 
in the Curly Cup in Connacht for junior sides. And Carrick and Shannon get their first competitive game of the season up and running with a trip to Ballyhornis on Sunday afternoon at 2.30. So the very best of luck to Carrick as they get their season up and running. We'll be talking to them and featuring them as they go ahead. No return to the All-Ireland League yet. None of that kicks off until uh, the new year. Uh, but there will be the Connacht Senior League and Cup. We'll be following Sligo's progress in that. There's two people from Leitrim involved with Sligo in that particular campaign this year. Eddie Coyle has joined Matthew Early in that squad. So we'll be catching up with the two lads before their Connacht Senior League and Senior Cup defence. Of course, Sligo, the defending champions uh, in both Cup and League this year for the first time ever. So the very best of luck to them. In ladies football this weekend sees the county finals and at intermediate level it is the clash of Mohal and Drumahair which takes full attention for all the teams. That game throws in at 3pm on Saturday afternoon in Balnamore. Now one girl who'll be at the game, part of that Mohal squad, but probably hasn't seen as much time as, as she'd like. We'll talk about that later on because we're going to actually talk to Michelle Hackett about her burgeoning golf career and some of the fantastic success that she has had in recent weeks and months in both the colours of Balnamore and Longford Golf Clubs. We're going to talk about that little clash as well later on. But first of all, you're very welcome to the programme. Michelle Hackett, welcome. Thank you, Brefney, for having me. My pleasure. Michelle, of course, we know each other from football over the years and the last few years. And uh, let's come back to that later on in our conversation. But first of all, golf is not a typical sport that we think about maybe in this county. Uh, But for you, it's just probably always been part of your life. Why golf? Uh, Exactly. Like, um, well, my grandfather and my auntie were both um, captains in Ballinamore Golf Club, and my father played, my brother. And so it was just golf was always part of my family until, like, obviously. I was involved in Gaelic all through my life, and then that's why I was sort of focused on that, but I was still had golf as like sort of leisure. I never really took it more competitively as I did football or any other sport until like the recent years. So when you say you took it seriously, tell us about what that really means in reality. Well, see, like when people think of golf, they probably think of like older people in like retirement um, only going out to walk, stroll around, where golf is actually... Um, but like there'd be a lot of high amateurs in the game, um, especially the lower. Like if you get into it at a younger age, the like more, um, you might become more successful like quicker, um, because you have more time to practice and like just get into the skills of the game fundamentals. Whereas if you get into the game a bit later in life, um, it's harder to like try and catch up, and you get a bit more frustrated trying to catch up with them. Of course, because the likes of Roy McIlroy or Tiger Woods would have been renowned golfers from the single digits. Like from when they were six, seven and eight, people would have known that kid's got potential and then they became what they became. What age were you when you first started playing golf? Um, well, I actually always had clubs from when I was younger, since I was eight, nine, when I was probably got, got my first set. Um, but I always had them. They're always up in the shed, but I never really used them. I never got out to a golf course. I was only really around the garden trying to avoid windows. <laughs> but... Um, it wasn't until probably when I was 15 I got properly into it and when I got my handicap and when you get your handicap that's when you really start to focus on playing the competitions and getting it lowered. So that would have been around what, 2015, 2016 yeah, kind of yeah. time? Um, you would have started off with, as everyone does with a high handicap. High handicap, 36. <laughs> and and where did that go from? How how quickly did you develop to what's now a, a you're off seven. Six, seven, yeah. Um, actually, that first year, I remember when you have to get your handicap, you have to get three cards in to get an official handicap. And uh, I remember just going around. I was it was the longest three rounds of my life going around hitting, <laughs> trying to finish every hole. But um, then that first year, when I started playing a lot more and practicing and playing competitions, I think I dropped eleven shots. So I went from thirty six down to twenty five or something like that. But, but that can, that's not unusual in itself because no. people will drop people with talent yeah. will drop from what is very high handicap. Like yeah, it's, it's actually quite easy, especially when you're the higher grade. You get a the lo- lower you go, like in a in a competition with a high handicap, you get cut qu- a lot quicker. Um, it's just the way the handicap system works. And um, so you win the first competition by like twenty shots. So yeah. Like, yeah, we'll take a load <laughs> yeah. off her next exactly, time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So um, that's how the first year started. And then the next year you'd lose probably, I, I think I lost like five or six. I got down to 21, 22. And then the, then I went, the next year after that, I went from 21 to like 19. And then 
the year I played, we got 19 to 50, and I didn't really play. I was kind of caught up more football, and I was doing my leave and search and going to like college and stuff. So I hadn't really time that summer. Um, so I, ruined, I was playing off 15 for quite a while, and it wasn't really until this year when obviously COVID hit and everyone was at home doing nothing. And as I said, like my dad is like big into golf. We were everyone sitting at home doing nothing for days and end, and so. We, luckily we have enough garden space that we were chipping around and dad even bit like uh, a little driving net that we could hit full shots into we so we wouldn't have to be hitting them into the field and losing golf balls so um, that's how I really sort of get more into it folks and, and um, that's w- when the competition started then there was no obviously contact there was no contact sports and there was social golf so I was playing a lot more in Ballinamore and Longford and uh, then when the competitions were allowed back that's when I was just had my full focus on them. So you were that really annoying person that we all know who developed a skill to the umpteenth degree during the lockdown. Actually, yeah. all these plans for writing a book or learning a new skill or learning how to play a new instrument or getting fit, you're actually someone who actually went and did that. Yeah, well, yeah, it was, I already had it, obviously, from the years beforehand, but I, where some people might have taken up cooking or, like you said, musical Making instrument. Making banana bread. Yeah, exactly, yeah. banana bread. I was doing what I... Was sort of new and trying to make it better like perfect it a bit better so that's what I was at <laughs> Absolutely. the past few months so now let's go on to the competitions because obviously the one that's caught my attention some of the local media were talking about it um, at various points over the last few weeks was the Irish Golfer Magazine competition tell us a bit about that and, and what that is and how it works so basically the Irish Golfer Magazine I always knew of it but I only really looked into more of it there only like a, two months ago it's basically the Irish Golf ma- magazine is a physical magazine, but they put on like an, a tour of Ireland. So they put on 14 events each year and they go around to the top courses around the country and basically get let people play them for a reduced price, but also in competitions with high value prizes. And if you're one of the lucky ones to qualify or win the competitions, you get to play in the K Club in the Ryder Cup course, which is quite nice. <laughs> and of course... That happens towards the end of October, and you've qualified by virtue of winning the the female yeah. category at the was it the Sleeve Russell? Sleeve Russell, yeah. So that day you show up. It's a big event. It's got probably got all the branding that people associate yeah. with golf. How does it work in terms of your head? What's going through your head that morning? Well, I was out, I actually had an early tea time. I was third group out, I think, and I was with three men from Donegal. So um, it was actually when you go to the first tee, they have a full announcer. They announce your name and your club, and you've hit off when everyone's watching you. It was a bit nerve-wracking. Every first tee is nerve-wracking without someone announcing. <laughs> but uh, oh, it was good. Like it was Does good. it add to the sense of occasion? Yeah, yeah. It made it... It was, it was a great experience. Like It was very enjoyable. And like I just sort of had to clear my head kind of up, because I knew if I didn't if I didn't hit a good tee shot off, I'd just make a show of myself. So <laughs> that's... <laughs> And I, I hate to ask this question, um, but in terms of you're playing with three guys, I'm guessing the the day is dominated by men at that level, or are we... yeah. Well, luckily, like there was the three categories: there was the male low handicappers, the male high handicappers, and then the women's category. So their competition had nothing to do with mine, which is, luckily was grand. So they didn't really have to. They didn't see me as a threat that day, basically. Do they help you around the course, though? Um. Obviously, they would be hitting off the men's tees, which is back, but I played Sleeve Russell multiple times. Like, I've probably played them plenty more times than them. I was probably giving them more of a help than anything, showing them the way around. But the fact that they hit off first, I was able, like, to judge my own shots going around. And Now, you mentioned it's a 14-stop tour, effectively, through the country. Do you just do the local one, or would you travel now? Uh, now that you're aware of it and the level of it and you've done reasonably well, would you be tempted to maybe continue going to some of those events I was actually looking into going and playing a few more big horses because you get in at a reduced rate in the competition there still is good prizes at each competition to win and um, luckily like if if I hadn't to qualified in the Russell I probably would have looked to go into them to try and qualify through the order of merit but um, I didn't have to the books they were actually all booked up by the time I'd looked at them but um, like I said I only found out about these sort of I looked into them about two months ago whereas this is going on since like start of covid or like I said it's february when they were all sort of postponed and pushed back to this time of year so that's how but it's something you keep an eye out for yeah for well, the I, I, would it become something that maybe you might use as a kind of a ranking for yourself to just kind of peg yourself against your opponents um yeah i could use this but um obviously with the there's no ilgu events on this year 
I'd be looking more to their main events than I would this. But it was a good experience. It was there to fill the void of having no district championships or um, women and girls championships around Connacht, Munster, Ulster and Leinster, which I would have been going to this summer, only they were postponed with weather and COVID. Now, you mentioned the ILGU, which of course is merging at the moment with the GUI. Mm -hmm. They're the two governing bodies, the women's, or the ladies, should I say, Irish Ladies Golfing Union and the Golfing Union of Ireland. They're merging into one super body to look over golf at all levels in the country. How much of a positive step is that for the sport in the country, in your opinion? Oh, yeah, it is a very positive um, step for level of golf for the women. Um, Like, we're the only, I think Ireland's the only um, country in golf that hadn't come together. Like, there was England golf, Welsh golf, Scotland golf. So, like, it's good to see that they are coming together and it'd probably get more easier to get to the courses and there won't be as many things clashing. And I know they work together already on that, but there might be more funding for the women's golf at the same time. So, hopefully, they will bring the level up a bit yeah no it can only be good when everyone's collaborating and everyone's on the same hymn sheet Mm -hmm. Uh, it's really really good for any sport that's done that over the years Uh, speaking of one sport that hasn't done that yet and that's of course Gaelic football and you're (laughs) out on on some Saturday afternoon in the county final Um, probably just to put people in the picture you're a a goalkeeper you're in with the county squad this year but you haven't been quite getting a game with with Mohol yeah, um, well, like I said, I was at the county the whole start of the year playing with the league, and I wasn't I wasn't in contact with my club at all. Like we couldn't with the amount of training we were doing with uh, county. Um, but then when COVID hit and I was getting into golf, I was sort of focusing more on the golf side of things. That I actually did something to my back and my leg, like lower leg, and that was right as we were starting back with club training. So I'd sit two weeks off from club training, sitting there, but. Um, then when we started back in in the championship, luckily we had a sub goalie that, that from last year that was she became the main goalie for the club this year, so um, it was grand. It was as a seamless the whole way through. They were used to playing with our goalie from the league and. It just worked out fine. On a personal note, though, it must be a little bit uh, just disappointing. I know as a sub goalkeeper, it's the worst position <laughs> in the world because yeah. if you're a sub forward, you'll probably get a run. But as a sub goalkeeper, mm. if if you're not in the possession of the jersey, you just probably don't get that opportunity. Uh, yeah. Particularly when you're winning and you get into a county final. Uh, like I said, you're there. Every member is part of the team. Like is worth or is there to get the team over the line at the end of the day. And we're all everyone on the panel is working towards the one goal of winning the championship. So. <laughs> I don't really mind when I had other things going along the sidelines. So, in terms of your own, uh, I suppose the group atmosphere. What's the atmosphere been like ahead of the game at the weekend? It's been good, especially since the men have won their semi final. The atmosphere around the town has been very good. Um, they're even decor- decorating the town there during the week with buntings and flags and getting the green man done up. So uh, yeah, no, the atmosphere of training has been unreal. Um, just getting ready and getting the heads right, re- like focused and prepared for Saturday because of course Moho wasn't your first club you no. ladies football is a bit strange <laughs> because clubs sometimes yeah. come and go and yeah. I know there was issues say when um, St Mary's folded a few years back and some girls went to Kiltobard and then there was kind of yeah. question marks but you would have done the same when Bornacula folded a few yeah. years ago you moved to Moho yeah so obviously I was at Bornacula and they folded like girls were other commitments and there was a few of us left, sort of didn't know, we had no senior club and we had no real junior club either. Like we were only playing senior football. So a few of us went to different clubs. Like I went to Mohol, um, some of the girls went to Fina, some went to Anna Duff and some went to Gorletra. We just all went. And then I was playing with Mohol probably a year and some of the older girls started to come back from probably studying, whatever, travelling. And then they were trying to form it back, but they hadn't enough girls to form and the rest of us were all settled in the other clubs that they weren't so they just decided I think they went with Gorletcher well, first it, and then they went to St Mary's, Mary's yeah. yeah it's all it's all quite strange and yeah but it, it, it works people yeah. kind of know exactly, where they yeah. stand at this stage but it does lead to some interesting matchups and yeah. uh, in, particularly the semi-final where I know there was Borna Kula girls playing for M- Mary's and also yeah. then the manager was Declan Bohan from yeah. Borna Kula and then who probably managed you I'm sure at some stage yeah, to, yeah, to whatever yeah, yeah. and then you're on the bench for Mohol it was just a really kind of weird <laughs> kind yeah, of moment yeah everyone looking in probably thinks it's so strange but like that's what I've been dealing with for the past four years at Mohol so it's become second to normal it just like, becomes second normal, nature like, yeah. in terms of I suppose the golf though to go back to the golf again you're a member of two clubs there in that situation so yeah. equally as confusing there yeah. Ballinamore and Longford you compete for both why two clubs? Um, well, I started my golf in Ballinamore, um, 
came in under like the captain, lady captain that that year when I joined was Patricia Bowen, and also she just a born yeah, Akula, exactly, born Akula, exactly. And she asked me, she like I played in the Born Akula GA Classic that year, and I hadn't a handicap, and she'd seen that I'd a bit of golf knowledge, and she asked me to come in and just play in I think her lady captain's day as a visitor. So then um, I got my handicap then after that, and that's how I started my golfing sort of off the handicap system, and um, just been playing there for the past few years. And then East Ballinamore is only a nine-hole course, and I needed sort of like another course to keep me ticking over, a, like a longer, more holes. Like Longford is an eighteen-hole course, so that's why I, I I was friendly with some of the girls that played in Longford as well. And it's only down the road for me, and um, there's a good few more girls my age there, so I was playing with them a good bit the past three years when I was a member. So. And of course, when you're in study in Athlone as well, it's yeah, closer. It's like on the way down, on Absolutely. the way up. <laughs> uh, in terms of the future, you've brought your handicap down to seven from yeah. 15. I think that's a huge achievement for anyone who's not familiar with the game. I'm not that familiar with the game, but I do know that single digit handicap is pretty handy. But to drop a couple of points in a year is impressive. To yeah. drop eight points from 15 to seven in the space of six months or so is yeah. is a particularly big achievement so congrats on that the results um you've and you sent me a list through and we were chatting of all the things you won it's too long to go through yeah. just every single captain's prize and ladies prize and thing going yeah. uh, it's a real nice roll of honor for the last six or eight months and on top of that then you've got um this fantastic result at national level to win that day in the sleeve russell yeah. is is huge so well done and i suppose it's great to have a different sport on the show it's the first yeah. time we've kind of properly featured anyone from the golf world we'd love to have more and more often and uh, the best of luck when that rolls around we might talk to you again ahead of the the finals exactly. of the the irish golf magazine irish golfer magazine we yeah. better give them their credit yeah. for their sponsorship yeah. um the irish golfer magazine awards are the final which takes place on the Ryder Cup course yep. at the K Club the K Club yeah. so uh, the best of luck to you in that and hopefully we'll <laughs> have a, another national title to be <laughs> yeah, talking yeah. about <laughs> hopefully thanks for dropping in thank you and the best of luck on Saturday as well thanks <laughs> Now, an event that would normally be much more high profile on our calendar, but has been slightly COVID restricted this year, uh, is National Bike Week. But it does take place next week and there's plenty of events, all safe and sound for everybody taking part. But to join us now to have a little chat about what that means and how that's going to look and what events are happening is Patricia Ford from Leitrim Local Sports Partnership. Patricia, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Bethany. It feels like it's been forever since we had you in. Uh, thank you very much for coming in. I know it's all a strange world at the moment for everybody involved in, yep. in particularly in public life in, in terms of uh, organisations like the Leitrim Sports Partnership because it must be very different for you at the moment because you're so Absolutely. used to being so, not, not touchy-feely, it's the wrong word, but so in contact with, with yeah, the Yeah, we, we do work with a lot of community groups and we're normally in contact with a lot of different groups throughout the whole county and it has, COVID has um, slightly uh, stopped us in our tracks, but now that we know where we stand with the restrictions, we can operate with uh, groups of 15 outdoors and groups of six, pods of six indoors. So I think now that we know where we stand, we can put all the health and safety measures in place, that there is social distancing, there's hand sanitizer, all equipment is sanitised pre and post juice so um yeah we're getting back to what we're us- used to do and work with all the community groups about Leitrim and trying to provide physical activity in a safe and fun manner for everybody i suppose people can find out more about that on your yeah. website which yeah. is leitrimsports.ie so all of the bike week information is all there and if anyone has any questions they're very welcome to get in contact with us all the details are on www.leitrimsports.ie Perfect. Well, we're going to run through some of the events that are happening and uh, give a little bit of a flavour of what's to come next week in the county, all over the county, from Kinlaw right down to the south of the county. Uh, we'll we'll go run through that and then we'll give the details of where people can find that again at the end of the little segment here on the show. Uh, Trish, you might start with just by telling us kind of what type of events, what's happening next week in the county. Absolutely, yeah. So Bike Week is a celebration of cycling and bikes and, and all to do with that. Uh, and it'll run from Saturday the 19th of September to Sunday the 27th. So starting off tomorrow, we have a balanced bike taster session in Carrick and Shannon for the toddlers at age two and a half to, to six years. Um, so balanced bikes are helping younger children get balance and fundamental coordination skills so normally we deliver this program with creches and and play groups and the those kind of community groups but we're doing an open taste session tomorrow morning in Carrick and Shannon so that's going to start off bike week for us we also have a recreational cycle up in Kinlaw on Wednesday for anybody in the North Leitrim area who'd like to come together and do a group cycle it's just going to be a short 
family friendly cycle and people will need to have their own bike and their own helmet we will have high vis for everybody but they need to have their own bike and helmet so uh, we're meeting at Kinlaw Community Centre next Wednesday at 6 30 p.m uh, the 23rd of September we also have a beginners learn to cycle program out in Leitrim Village so often in other years in bike week we have people contacting us saying that they'd like to learn to cycle so this is open to teenagers and adults if there's anybody who has never learned to cycle before and there's a lot of people out there you wouldn't think of what there is um, who want to learn to cycle they are very welcome to come along to Leitrim Village at half six all of our events you do need to pre-register just with the restrictions we're obviously limited to numbers um, but that is happening next Thursday in Leitrim Village and now the beginners cycling because people might be a little bit embarrassed mm-hmm. at say 25 30 that yeah. they haven't actually learned to get, to get on a bike and even a little bit scared because yeah. at that stage of your life as well it, even teenagers you don't want to fall because you don't mind falling when you're six Absolutely. falling when you're 16 or 66 yeah it's a completely different animal yeah I know um like it's we always come across it that there's people that want to learn to cycle and we will have bikes and helmets provided for that group so once people register um, we will make sure that there's a bike there for them on the evening um, look, again numbers are limited so they will need to pre-register and all the links for any of the registration is on our website um, but like it's good to see people taking the initiative to give themselves that new scale of learning to cycle they won't regret it it's not going to be easy to learn but we have coaches and instructors that will be there helping them and encouraging them along the way and I think it'll be a really enjoyable session it's it's a lovely thing to do and of course you never forget how to cycle once you once you learn yes. yeah you never forget it exactly That's what so it might be one hard session but it'll be worth it after that for the more maybe experienced people that might be going on what else is going on um, we have a lot of community groups leading group cycles. So, for example, um, on Saturday, Lock Key Triathlon Club are, and their friends are doing a big cycle with some of the very experienced members. They're doing a 225 kilometre cycle around County Leitrim. Um, we also have Anadolf ICA are taking part in a group cycle on Sunday. The Anadolf ICA are a great bunch of women. Um, in the last few years for Bike Week, they have cycled the Blue Way from Leitrim Village to Drumshambo. So they are doing that. We also have a group in Fa- Breffney Family Resource Centre who are going to do a group cycle. Michelle, our sports inclusion officer, has organised that with Breffney Resource Centre. We also have Leitrim Cycling Festival doing a cycle confidence programme on Sunday the 27th um, of September. And Leitrim Cycling Festival have organised all that. And if people would like to find more information on that, they can contact Leitrim Cycling Festival at gmail.com. Again, that information is on our website, but the registration will be through Leitrim Cycling Festival. Um, we also have SNGA Club are doing a family cycle on Sunday the 27th of September towards the end of Bike Week and B Park Sports Hub Manor Hamilton are organising an open spinning class. Uh, again, pre-registration for the spinning will be through the two spinning instructors up there, Niall and Kieran, and their contact details are on our website. And on that Sunday as well, the 27th, Lockheed Triathlon Club are doing an open cycle where they have an option of a 20k or 40k if other people in the county would like to come and join the triathlon club for our group cycle on the Sunday morning. There's information on our website about that. Um, it sounds like a really good mix of things that people can do across from Esland to Kinlaw to yeah. the Bee Park in Manor Hamilton right down to Lock Key. Uh, Lock Key are usually based on Carrick and Shannon though rather yeah. than actual Lock Key itself. It's, mm-hmm. in, it's in County Leitrim. Yeah, a lot of the members are Leitrim based so yeah, we consider them one of the Leitrim sports clubs even though Lock Key is in County Roscommon. They've just stolen the name. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of, you mentioned before we started recording here about uh, Share Your Rougher Roads and it's yeah. an initiative from the Leitrim Cycling Festival. Mm-hmm. Tell us what it, that is and what that... It sounds great. Yes, so Share Your Roha Roads is an initiative by Leitrim Cycling Festival and they are looking for people all throughout Leitrim to find out the different cycle routes in their area. Maybe track the distance, be it 10k, 20k, 5k, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a massive long route. It can be any type of route throughout the county. If they can take pictures of it, they can upload it. And Leitrim Cycling Festival are... They have a format... A, from the website Route U that people can upload their routes to share them with others to try and make more awareness about the cycling routes around Leitrim and to have all the people in the county whether they're cyclists or not even people travel on the roads um, for cars and drivers to be more aware of the cycle routes and the people on the roads so I think it's a really good initiative for trying to make people more aware of the different cycling routes and get more people cycling because it's really good for physical activity and it's one of those free activities once you've got your bike you 
you know you don't need to pay your gym membership for, to use the bike you, you, you can have it for all year round yeah of course and uh, the I love the idea of everybody sharing their own little bit of local knowledge yeah. and building up this catalogue of, of different opportunities to go and see nice places see a yeah. photograph of and go oh, absolutely and you can see so much when you go cycling There's uh, you can go for a walk and notice all the small things but when you go cycling you make so much more distance and you can notice all the other things around you so it's a really lovely initiative by Leitrim Cycling Festival it's so. a lovely pace to see the world as well trust me <laughs> and of course this isn't just for the, the young and fit and healthy this is for people of all ages so Absolutely. tell us about maybe some of the initiatives at either end of the spectrum yeah so as I mentioned we have Anna Duff ICA doing a cycle on the Blue Way and also the Ballamore Men's Shed do a senior cycle along the canal in Ballamore and so it's great to see these groups you know taking the initiative to do their, their cycle uh, the groups generally work with Seamus in electric bike trails in Leitrim Village and look it's it's great uh, example that these groups are set and that you can be active at any age so we've got Ballamore Men's Shed and the Anaduff ICA doing their cycles but we also have a youth group uh, working with us out in Loch Ren. we're doing a Be Active Day next Saturday on Saturday the 26th of September and we have youth group coming to do a, a cycle with us around Loch Ren. so there is something for all age groups and we have the balance bikes as well for the very young yeah the balance bikes are great in, in case people aren't familiar with that it's essentially a bicycle without without any a chain or without a, yeah, no, pedals. Kind of, no pedals or anything. so the kids of all ages can just use their feet so yep. they stand and then they just push themselves and it's just purely about balance it's Absolutely, not about any yeah. of the other things that go yeah they it. kind of scoot and glide on their feet so like they get balance and coordination skills that they wouldn't have got if they went straight to stabilizers but they also they pick it up so quick Absolutely. it's phenomenal um have you checked the weather forecast yet next week yes the weather is good at the moment so fingers crossed it stays that way absolutely no very important it's yeah i don't um, when i'm cycling which is doesn't happen as often as it should uh i i don't mind getting wet when i'm on the bike it's the thought of starting or stopping in the rain is yeah. just horrific and um, but no hopefully uh, the weather stays good for you and it looks like a great program of events something for everybody yeah and something in every location now maybe the thing for you or your age group might necessarily be in your location but uh, you can maybe ask to join them make, make friends yeah, no, people week. can it's get in contact if there's anything that they'd want to query or they'd like to get involved with something they're more than welcome to contact us we have loads of stuff going on there's also uh, some schools taking part in bike week events like Drumshambo National School are doing a cycle and also the Gale School here in Carrick and Shannon are doing a cycle as well so uh, if anyone would like more information on any of those they can contact us and I'd just like to mention the community guards in Carrick and Shannon they've been really helpful with all the program plan we're doing they're going to go around to a lot of the different groups and um talk about road safety and, and all that the very important elements of that so thanks to the community guards for helping us with that perfect and of course this is a slightly surreal year for everything so mm-hmm. things are changing so check the website there yep. might be a new addition to the program yes, there yeah, could be the, things maybe cancelled that for various reasons yep. so yep. please do check before you go out and maybe just confirm the morning of events yep. or whatever uh, just to avoid disappointment and showing up and it's actually been cancelled for on un- unavoidable reasons uh, Patricia ta- thanks for having anything else going on in the sports partnership when I have you it's... yes we have loads of coach education courses happening all the time um, and our safeguarding courses and we've got sports first aid planned coming up um, and, and we are planning programs the whole time so um, all the information for all our programs are on our website and of course anybody involved in any sports club in the county should have those guard the vetting sports uh, the child protection stuff yep. that should be standard if you haven't got it uh, get in touch with the sports partnership for yep. you or your club and they'll sort you right out Trisha, thanks very much Thank for dropping you. in. And that, folks, is all we have time for today. A massive thank you to Patricia Ford and Michelle Hackett for popping in and saying hello to me. Don't forget, you can catch that ladies' football game live on the Leitrim GA website. Just le- click in there, create an account, and it's €10 Euros to watch this county final on Sunday. So the very, very best luck to all the teams taking part in finals or semi-finals this weekend and to all of our other athletes taking part in competitions a little bit further afield we wish you the very best of luck too thank you to the Leitrim local enterprise office for their continued support of the show it's great to have them on board as partners and uh, we look forward to uh, adding more partners to the show if you want to be involved and you want to sponsor one of these shows do get in touch with us info at leitrimdaily.com we're reaching tens of thousands of people across all of our platforms on a weekly basis and in a small county like Leitrim that's pretty substantial numbers so we would like to help you grow your business and if you want think we can help you with that 
get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, my name is Brett Fernerly. That has been our show for the week. I'll be back on Monday with all of the reports from all over the grounds across all the sports this weekend. Don't forget, you can check out our YouTube channel for all of our interviews and all the post-match reaction from across the grounds as well. I'll be back on Monday. Talk to you then.